Now let's talk about motion in two dimensions. And when we deal with motion, we deal with vectors. We could have displacement vectors that represent the movement from one place to another, or we could have velocity vectors which tell us how fast something is going and in what direction. But a lot of times when we're dealing with motion in two dimensions, we need to be able to do a little bit of vector math. And in particular, we need to be able to add vectors in two dimensions. So let's look at this situation. A person walks four miles east. He then stops, turns north, and walks an additional three miles. We can draw a diagram to represent this. So on your page, come over here, about here, pick a starting point. This is where the person starts. And first, he walks four miles to the east. So let's draw an arrow to the east, and we'll write four miles next to it and that gets him to this point. So that little dot right there represents the place where he stops after his four mile hike to the east. He then turns north and walks an additional three miles. So from this point he heads north. So draw an arrow that way and put a little dot there indicating that he stops right there. And we're following the usual convention that, that north on a map, north is up, south is down, east is to the right, and west is to the left. That's a pretty standard practice for maps. So he goes east first, and then north. And the, the northerly part of the journey, we were told, was three miles. So let's put a three miles next to that. OK, just take note of how, I, how I've drawn these. I drew my four mile vector pointing to the right, which is east. And I drew my three mile vector pointing up, which is north. So the way I've drawn them matches the given information. I've also drawn my four mile vector a little bit longer than my three mile vector. If you wanted to, you could put out a, pull out a ruler and make those exactly to scale. You might this, make this one four centimeters and this one exactly three centimeters. It's not necessary to do that, but it is a good idea to draw them approximately just as best you can with a, a rough sketch by hand drawing them to scale. You should be able to see that your four mile vector obviously should be longer than the three mile vector, but it shouldn't be twice as long or five times as long. It should just be a little bit longer. So you end up with a diagram something like this. In this case, each of these arrows represents a movement from one place to another. So we have a starting position and an ending position. And this vector represents the displacement from the start to the finish of the first leg of the hike. For the second leg of the hike, we have a starting position and an ending position. And so this vector represents the displacement for the second leg of the hike. We call these displacement vectors because they're vectors. They show us how far and in what, what direction. And that's the displacement. So these are displacement vectors.